Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures. It's Friday, which means it's time for Obscurity in Literature. And lo and behold, we actually have something that we could assume is relatively mainstream, but this is Obscurities in Miniatures, Literature, whatever you want to call it, and we don't really play too much in the realm of the mainstream. Yeah, it is a Marvel comic, and yeah, it is Silver Surfer, but there's some things about this book that really... I think got overlooked by a lot of people but also celebrated for those very reasons and that is of course Trad Moore's art and I know a lot of people have really been hyping up uh, Donny Cates's run on the cosmic Marvel stuff which I've always been a big fan of that's probably my main jam when it comes to the Marvel stuff but this book is just absolutely gorgeous and one thing I have to make clear and I've like fretted and gotten flustered with this all week long of how am I going to film this thing because this book is not a regular sized book this this is a regular sized comic this is an old classic I loved this book it's like one of the most mainstream comics I this was in my heyday of image comics and I was so into Hong Kong movies and that's what this is all about anyway that's that's a whole other story but just so you get an idea of the size of this book it's huge it's really really big and it doesn't really fit on the screen the other thing you'll notice is it's incredibly glossy the entire thing is incredibly glossy and it's going to be really hard to get a good look now Tradmore I first discovered with the strange case of Luther Strode and I'm sure a lot of other people that's where they first encountered his art but the guy has a crazy sense of dynamicism it reminds me a bit of Jojo's artist Araki and uh, with the guy that did uh, Kakugo no Susume, the Apocalypse Zero guy. Also very similar in terms of their crazy, disjointed, elongated, over-elaborate musculature and just movement, sense of dynamicism in the artwork here. It's just a wild-looking book. And I'm not going to get into the details. Thankfully, it doesn't really tie in to any specific story there's no real need for context of who anybody is or what exactly is going on and i'm not going to spoil it but there's just some neat looking stuff and as the story in the book goes it gets weirder and weirder and absolutely i love that kind of stuff and yeah so the surfer's hand turns black you got ego showing up and then the colors start and then the trip kicks in. But honestly, that's like one of my favorite parts is just the artwork gets crazier and crazier as this book progresses. And to me, it's like Ditko's prime Doctor Strange in terms of just, you know, piercing the realities and traveling through dimensions as the surfer does his thing. And there is a point to all this. I'm not just showing it off and it's just like, oh yeah, look at all the trippy colors and all the crazy stuff. I have. There is a story behind all of it. And I'm not going to get too much into it. But the Watchers show up and do all that stuff. And we talk about Galactus. And there's all kinds of symbolism and stuff. And then we're tripping through space again. And then, then we really get fun at the end here. Just love the anatomy i mean obviously if you guys ever get a chance to look at the strange case of luther strode uh, tradmore obviously has a strong understanding of the human anatomy but just like many good artists just tends to take that and then play with it and go wild with it and we have the surfer as he is just having things happen and i'm not going to spoil it like i said it is a fun story there's some neat stuff going on here. We have cosmic battles, super poses with blades. I mean, there's just a lot to absorb and dig in. To me, this is one of those books that I can come back to time and time again. Because, you know, it doesn't have a really set story and I'm not going to go into what all is happening there but it is kind of a fun one to revisit every now and then and there is a fitting tribute to Stan Lee 
and a throwback nod to the old Mobius graphic novel, which I might add is quite a classic if you've never had a chance. To me, that is one of the more definitive surfer stories out there. So, I'll be honest, I'm not even really a big fan of the Silver Surfer. I mean, yeah, it was neat when it showed up. I mean, you know, it's definitely, there is a purpose and a necessity of having a character like him. And, you know, Stan Lee did some cool stuff with him back in the late 60s and 70s with the Curly Buscema limited series when that first was rolling out. I mean, obviously I had to read it in reprints, but that was okay. To me, this is what I really enjoy about modern American superhero comics when it's just kind of unfettered and let loose from the, you know, ongoing continuity. There's no real, it's not going to rock the status quo. It's just a neat story. Um, I believe it does tie into Thanos stuff that was happening with the Guardians of the Galaxies. Um, I wouldn't know. I haven't read Guardians of the Galaxies since Dan Abnett was writing that in going back and looking, I think it was like 2007 or 8 or something crazy like that. It, it's just amazing how time flies sometimes. But it just, to me, kind of encapsulates the best of what superhero comics can offer. You know, a good, in-depth look at the character and what makes them tick. And then, you know, also, there's a lot of the own author's feelings getting filtered through this character as well, much like what Stanley was doing with him back in the 60s and 70s with Buscema and Kirby as well. So it's kind of neat to see this coming full circle. And again, the art is awesome. If you guys ever have a chance to track down a copy of The Strange Case of Luther Strode, or I think there's a the big collected edition, it's really neat. It is absolutely over the top, overtly violent. I will just warn you about that. And it reads really quick. I finished the entire series in a day, and I was kind of bummed out about that, but then it was, you know, fun to go back and reread it again. Trad Moore's art definitely is the highlight here, but that's not to say that Kate's story isn't, like, a big letdown either. So, something interesting. And the only other surfer book that I actually own besides this is actually the Alred Omnibus, which another big quality book, which maybe we'll get to eventually. I mean, I own probably, like, four or five Marvel books at this point still. My tastes have gotten far too eclectic for Marvel these days, but, you know, what can I say? I know this is also going to be getting collected into a big Thanos omnibus type thing with all of the Donny Cates stories that he has written, so I know that's going to be like the Cosmic Ghost Rider stuff and the Thanos stories, and I think the Inhumans stuff is in there as well. So, if you don't like the giant size. I do worry about the binding. Uh, it's just a regular paperback, but the size of it and, you know, wanting to flip it open, because why, why would you not want to flip it open when you've got these big, crazy, crazy panels like this? I think looking at it in a regular size comic might diminish the feel. I don't know if it was originally released in giant, super treasury-sized edition, or if it was just a regular floppy comic. Beats me. I haven't looked at a floppy in years. So that might be another option if you want the whole shebang, the whole story of all the Thanos stuff that's been rolling around with Marvel comics, not the movies, but the comics for the last few years, that might be an avenue. And I know this story is going to be in there as well. So something to keep in mind while you are perusing Amazon. I'll put a link down below if you are curious. And if you are, give it a look. And hopefully we'll be back next week with even more obscurities in literature. With that said... This has been High Lord Tamerlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.